the head of that ignoble traitor, the dangerous and unsuspected Hastings. Bring in the Warren Beatty light and the mayonnaise over the lens. It's not every day news nights in the presence of Hollywood royalty. So dear, I loved the man that I was with. It's the Queen's speech, I think, this morning. It was, it was all a bit of um, a nightmare getting here, but we're here. From all the danger of but Kevin Spacey's got a film to promote, a behind-the-scenes documentary about taking his production of Richard III around the world. And seem a saint when most I play the devil. What do you think the state of British theatre is now? There is lots of places where there is um, tremendous growth, really interesting ideas, really, you know, even if shows don't work, um, the, the ideas behind shows, why people are trying to work on certain issues and tackle certain kinds of theater uh, is very exciting and, and I, I think it's, you know, it's in an incredibly healthy place. It's, it's exciting to be a part of it. Will you be sad to leave? Well, I mean, I'm never going to leave, leave. It's not like, oh, I'm going to get on a plane and fuck off. You know, I will always be a part of this country and I will always have a place in London and it's a huge part of my life. Back in the 90s, when he won an Oscar for American Beauty, you might have bet Spacey would opt for Hollywood above all else. It's the weirdest thing. I feel like I've been in a coma for about 20 years, and I'm just now waking up. Instead, he chose a 10-year stint running London's Old Vic Theatre. I just was at a point in my life when um, I didn't want to pursue the same dream, and everybody wanted me to pursue the same dream because that's what people are supposed to do. And I was like, I did it. I mean, I had this unbelievable run of making movies and making films that I'm, you know, unbelievably grateful. Some will stand the test of time and <laughs> others will thankfully be forgotten. My job is to clear the pipes and keep the sludge moving. Now, of course, he's better known on the small screen for the American political drama House of Cards, a standout hit for the streaming service Netflix. Give and take. Welcome to Washington. Why do you think, first of all, that the best writing at the moment is on TV? Because movies stopped making drama. What do you mean? The ground dried up. Uh, somewhere the end of the, you know, right into the 2000s, um, the motion picture studios, for the most part, started to focus on tentpole movies, comic book characters, um, and that's what they're driven by. Um, and real, incredible, brilliantly written, brilliantly directed, brilliantly acted character drama moved to a very fertile ground, which is television. Um, because creative people are going to go where they can work and where they can create, so it hasn't surprised me at all. With a third series in the pipeline, the work's on House of Cards, where Spacey's Democrat, Frank Underwood, constantly maneuvers for power in Washington while teasing the show's audience with waspish sides. I almost pity him. He didn't choose to be put on that planet. So if the West Wing is a sort of idealized version of politicians and House of Cards is really seriously cynical, where do you think the truth lies? I think we're closer to the truth. <laughs> is it education? You might very well think that. I couldn't possibly comment. I make a joke now, and I make it sound like President Clinton said this, but he didn't actually say it, but I like pretending that he did, that what they do on that House of Cards, 99% of what they do is true. And the 1% they got wrong is you could never get an education bill passed that fast. Um, I've had politicians, you know, real politicians say to me it's cynical and it's not really like that, and I've had others say it is closer to the way it really is than you would ever like to imagine. Does that depress you? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't depress me because, you know, in the sense that, oh wow, that's such shocking news. It depresses me because it makes me think that people don't want to go into public service because what's the point? And public service is an unbelievably important thing. Um, you know, people say to me, oh, would you run for politics? Would you run for office? And I'm like, are you kidding me? I like to get things done. I'm just wondering if uh, we brought the advanced copies of the House of Cards. <laughs> Despite the program's cynicism about the political system, we know President Obama likes it. I, I wish things were uh, that uh, ruthlessly efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Has Obama disappointed you? No. I, I think it's incredibly difficult to get anything done when um, the people who are basically um, in control uh, uh, of the House of Representatives 
have made a declaration that they will stop everything that you wanted to try to achieve. So, you know, you can only play ball if everyone's playing together, you know, so it doesn't surprise me. Do you think Frank Underwood would have any advice for he him? He would kill a lot of them. And when you finish at the Old Vic next year, what next? Shoe, back to shoe salesman? Stand up? I don't know what's next. That's actually one of the most exciting things. Obviously, I, I'm enjoying doing House of Cards, and that, that may well continue beyond the third season. I don't know. I mean, that's actually kind of thrilling, not knowing um, is thrilling. Don't know yet.